Knowing full well that Donald Trump's record as president is objectively inferior to the record of President Biden, Republicans are instead relying on revisionist history and short-term memory to try to make the case for you to vote for them in November, with many Republicans asking, are you better off now than you were four years ago? Unfortunately for them, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg and others are aware of this sleight of hand and expose it for what it's worth. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, we're going to play several clips in this video, but one of the things that I've encountered when debating Republicans, particularly MAGA Republicans, is they have a very um, loose relationship with time. They don't seem to understand how time works. So what you'll hear a lot is, you know, Donald Trump had the best economy in the world. Things were going great under Donald Trump, but they only count three out of the four years of his presidency and then forget about the accomplishments and the gains under the Obama administration that Donald Trump inherited. And they do the same thing with, you know, Joe Biden. When they want to blame Joe Biden for something, they forget about the last year of Trump's presidency or any context. It just it's all Joe Biden's fault. They even blame Joe Biden for things that happened when Donald Trump was president. So, again, just a very loose relationship with time. I'm going to play a couple of clips here, starting with Elise Stefanik, one of the more deranged Republican Congress people and allegedly one of Trump's potential uh, candidates to be his vice president if he wins the presidency. This is what she has to say. As Ronald Reagan famously asked us, are you better off today than you were four years ago? The answer for hardworking Americans across the country is a resounding no. That's interesting. And you know what? Perhaps there is some polling to suggest it that maybe because of, again, time and short term collective memory and the fact that we've had so many things, good and bad, occur in the last four years and people are not fixated on the record. They're focused on their hobbies, their career, their families, et cetera, and so forth. Maybe they've memory hold it, to borrow a phrase. Well, Secretary of Transportation and Biden surrogate Pete Buttigieg is on the case. He's one of the more rhetorically gifted uh, Democratic elected officials. Excuse me, he's not elected. He was appointed by President Biden to his position, but prominent public officials. And uh, he addresses it pretty well. Republican response came from Senator Katie Britt of Alabama. Let's take a look. The free world deserves better than a dithering and diminished leader. Just ask yourself. Are you better off now than you were three years ago? You know, a majority of America are saying the answer to that is no. That's the classic Ronald Reagan question. Yeah, three or four years ago, you couldn't get toilet paper. Uh, three or four years ago, we were in the middle of a pandemic that killed about a million people. Uh, when we took office, just to take a couple examples from the transportation sector, there had been four straight years of promises uh, about an infrastructure bill that never came. Of course, President Biden delivered that in his first year and is contributing to manufacturing jobs and construction jobs around the country. Uh, aviation, uh, right now, one of our biggest challenges is making sure airlines can keep up with the demand. Three years ago, the big question was whether America's airlines were going to go out of business because of the condition that the economy was in when President Biden inherited it. Now, I know those response addresses have to be written before the State of the Union is actually delivered, and I don't think they usually change them based on what actually happens during the address, but anybody who watched that address saw, not just in the substance, but in the delivery of President Biden's remarks, a leader who is in command, showing strength and clarity of vision. So again, Pete Buttigieg answers the question very well, not just with respect to his specific sector, which is transportation, um, but just in general. You know, the pandemic happened on Donald Trump's watch. Now, people say, we well, can't blame Donald Trump for the pandemic. And I'm not saying that he is the cause of it, but as commander in chief, as head of state, as head of government, as the leader of the Republican Party, Donald Trump had a moral, political, and civic obligation to manage that crisis to the very best of his ability. And he failed unless the very best of his ability is just completely substandard. He denied that the virus was real. He said it'd be over in a few days. He constantly undercut his own medical advisors, his own uh, you know, medical agencies. He didn't use the bully pulpit to rally Republican governors and senators and congresspeople and politicians to take the virus seriously. And as a matter of fact, the lingering consequence of Donald Trump's stupidity and wishy-washiness with respect to COVID is that even now, 
red states and red counties, so Republican counties, Republican states, Republican supporting areas of this country have much higher rates of infection, severe consequence, and death compared to those who voted for President Biden, right? This is the lingering consequence of COVID because of Donald Trump's mismanagement. And then, of course, all the economic fallout to ensue from it. And some people say, well, again, can you blame Trump for that? And it's like, well, again, yes, because he didn't do his very best. Um, and actually, you can see where he constantly screwed up uh, for political reasons. Um, and then the question becomes, if the shoe had been on the other foot, if a Democrat had been in office during the pandemic, would Republicans be so considerate? I say no, in which case I'm not obligated, nor you, to play by double standards. And so to just put it in perspective, Donald Trump recently said he did a great job on COVID. And we did a fantastic job on that. We never got credit for that. Unbelievable job on that. We came up with things that nobody thought was possible. So again, he's patting himself on the back for COVID. But as the Biden uh, White House, or excuse me, the Biden campaign has pointed out, this is footage of mass graves being dug for the victims of COVID on Donald Trump's watch. To put that in perspective, uh, not exactly a great job. Um, so actually, as a matter of fact, too, this is Deborah Burks, uh, Donald Trump's former chief medical advisor with respect to COVID. This is what she had to say about Trump's COVID response. When you look at your data now and you think, OK, had we mitigated earlier, had we actually paused earlier and actually done it, how much of an impact do you think that would have made? Well, I look at it this way. The first time we have an excuse, there were about 100,000 deaths that came from that original surge. All of the rest of them, in my mind, could have been mitigated or decreased substantially. And she testified before that as well, this idea that because of the Trump administration's stupidities and inconsistencies and refusal to embrace best practices, um, hundreds of thousands of more people died than needed to from this pandemic to the extent that any casualties were inevitable, right? So 2020 um, and the disasters which ensued happened on Trump's watch, and Trump is hoping that you'll forget about it. MSNBC commentator Chris Hayes uh, delightfully points out the sleight of hand that they're trying to do with respect to time. They are crying to a campaign slogan of make America 2019 again. Just listen to Tim Scott celebrating Trump's win last night. President Trump spoke to the voters today across our country, Republicans, Democrats and independents about the future. We have to go back to that future 2017 to 2020. Nope, it's not a three year term, not a three year term. 27, 2020. Trump was president from 2017 to 2021, not 2020. I promise you I was there. And this is the whole game. Donald Trump Republicans want you to chop an entire year off the end of Trump's term as if he just gets his political mulligan for the catastrophe that was the end of his presidency. They want you to conveniently ignore the mass unemployment, the disruptions to nearly every aspect of our lives, the freezer trucks packed full of bodies. They are crying. He's absolutely correct. Um, this is something that, again, I've encountered when I've debated and talked to Republicans in the past. Again, just the absolute like they almost like they're they're Doctor Strange in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're trying to manipulate time. Time began in 2017 when Donald Trump was inaugurated. He inherited nothing good from President Obama. And then time ended I don't know, December 31st, 2019, or perhaps if we're being super charitable, February 1st, 2020, uh, 2020, and then the remainder of the year just didn't count. And the bad stuff was actually Joe Biden's fault, even though he wasn't in office at the time. Don't fall for it. And don't let your friends and family members and acquaintances fall for it either. They're counting on revisionist history and short-term collective memory to try to make the case because they know fact to fact, the record simply doesn't compare. At the end of the day, President Biden's record is simply objectively better. You know, when he came into office, he passed on a partisan basis, enormously helpful stimulus bills, which accelerated economic growth, which created 4 million jobs ahead of schedule, which put money in the pockets of Americans. He presided over the vaccine rollout, which got the vaccinations into people's arms. He doubled the preliminary projections of 100 million jabs 
in 100 days, it was 200, which allowed the economy to safely open back up. And from there, again, one legislative and executive win after another. Trump can't compete with that. Trump cannot compete with that. And so, again, what they're hoping is that you'll forget certain things or grade Trump on a curve. I hope you won't. You shouldn't. And the sleight of hand is just completely cynical by Republicans. Let me know what you think in the comments.